I just don't understand how we ignore Israel's terroristic history. I, I just don't understand how that is overlooked and how the fact that Israel is occupying another people's land, how we consider Israel to be the just nation. But I do because of their white skin, because Israel is very much into ethnic cleansing because they deny black Jews the same privileges and rights as white Jews. Zionist Jews are now Nazis. These changes took place on April 9th, 1948, when the village of Dir Yassin was attacked. A British government report to the United Nations describes the scene. 250 people were killed in circumstances of great savagery. Women and children were stripped, lined up, photographed, and then slaughtered by automatic firing. The story of what happened at Dir Yassin set off panic all over the country. As news spread, people fled, fearing they would be next. Historians have recorded dozens of similar massacres during this period. Each time, they would result in entire communities fleeing. Now we're going to look at how Britain did that. World War I had been a conflict between rival empires, and the winners set up the League of Nations to distribute the losing side's territories between them. They called it the Mandate System, putting territories once controlled by the Ottoman and German empires under the, quote, tutelage of advanced nations until they became independent. Hmm. Britain was given the mandate over Palestine, but the Palestinian people were never asked what they wanted or what independence would look like to them. Listen to what Balfour wrote to one of his colleagues. So if we look at the founding of Israel and we look at how the Palestinian people were treated, how do we justify Israel as the righteous nation is what I want to ask people. For in Palestine, we do not propose even to go through the form of consulting the wishes of the present inhabitants of the country. Instead, it was the Zionists who were consulted about what their vision for Palestine was. And so the mandate ended up incorporating not just the Balfour Declaration, but several clauses requiring Britain to ensure the establishment of a Jewish home in Palestine. British rule was very accommodating to the Zionist project. The Jewish community in Palestine grew with big waves of immigration. They had their own schools and factories and even their own militia, the Haganah. And they were led by the Polish-born David Ben-Gurion, the leader of their representative body, the Jewish Agency. To the Palestinians, it was clear that Britain wasn't delivering them independence. It was delivering their country to other people. In 1936, they went on strike. British forces tried to... So we have to understand that Israel is on stolen land. The, the people who are present in Israel and are governing and are gaining and, and receive all of the world military support are people who stolen and murdered another group of people out of the land that they was residing in. Let's be clear about what the Israel-Palestine war is actually about. Break the strike with arrests, torture, mass punishment, and executions. Leaders were exiled, weapons confiscated, and houses blown up. Palestinian fighters attacked British and Jewish targets, while British and Haganah forces would carry out joint raids on Palestinian villages. Something had to change. The British government sent a commission called the Peel Commission to figure it out, but their proposed solution was typical. Just draw another British line on the map, divide the country, give this part to the Jews and this part to the Palestinians and make that part of Transjordan next door. Oh, and because the Palestinians were a majority in the country, 250,000 of them would have to be removed by force to make the Jewish state viable. Remember, these were the proposals you have to understand what was done to these people. We're asking these people to suffer in silence. 
So we really have to understand that these people have every right to resist Israel occupation. That were meant to calm things down. Spoiler, they didn't. Instead, the revolt continued until 1939, by which time about 10% of Palestine's adult male population had either been killed, injured, arrested, or exiled. The British government really needed a solution. So here comes another report. The commission is studying the 20-year-old Jewish settlements in British mandated Palestine. The 1939 white paper created a conflict between the British and the Zionists for the first time because it rejected partition and said the solution was for Palestine to gain independence within 10 years with everyone living there sharing it together. Crucially, it also imposed severe limits on Jewish land purchases and immigration. To the Zion See, the issue is that Europeans cannot live at peace amongst anybody. You have to understand that prior to these Zionist Jews coming to Palestine, during the Ottoman Empire, Christian Jews and Muslims all lived in that area together. Zionists, this felt like a betrayal. In response, some set off bombs across the country, killing dozens of Palestinians. But soon, everyone was distracted by something much bigger. More than 60 million people were killed in World War II, including 6 million Jews murdered in Nazi death camps. Jewish survivors fled Europe, with a large number of them trying to find safety in Palestine despite the British limit on Jewish immigration. This set off a more direct confrontation between the Zionists and the British, with Palestinians often targeted as well. The Zionists knew two things. Militarily, they were stronger than the Palestinians. And Britain was exhausted by World War II, so it wouldn't have the stomach to keep fighting in Palestine. They were right. In 1947, after 30 years of occupation, Britain announced it was quitting Palestine and asked the newly formed United Nations to clean up its mess. All right, 1947 and 1948 are the most pivotal years in this story. So let's take a look at how things are lining up. During British rule, Jews had gone from 10% to 30% of the population and owned about 6% of the land. Under Ben-Gurion's leadership, the Jewish agency was pretty much functioning as a government for the Jewish community. And the Zionist militias had tens of thousands of soldiers, modern weapons, and officers who'd already fought in World War II. On the other side, the Palestinians hadn't been allowed to develop their own administration or military. But as they waited for the UN solution, they were still the majority all over the country. In November 1947... See, as you see, the UN directly inhibited them from developing their own country and putting themselves in a position to defend their homeland. So this has been a United Nations attempt to replace a uh, melanated group of people with a white nation people, which is something that white people consistently do. So if you're black and you're on the side or believe that Israel is just, then you lack the humanity that you ask that white people apply upon us as black people the UN, then only made up of a fraction of the world's countries, voted to partition Palestine. This plan marked off 55% of the country for a Jewish state. But the UN never explained how it could be a Jewish state when half the people in its territory were Palestinian. To nobody's surprise, Palestinians, and in fact all Arabs, rejected the UN's plan. Ben-Gurion and the Zionist leadership accepted, but they saw an opportunity. With the British on the way out, the Zionists knew they would have the strongest military in Palestine. Their forces were instructed to seize more territory than they'd been awarded by the UN and to do what was necessary to reduce the number of Palestinians in it. In cities like Haifa... But we're not going to call Israel a terrorist state. Israel is a terrorist state on occupied land. The militia set off car bombs in Palestinian neighborhoods. They attacked villages and forced residents out. Haganah troops have driven the Arabs out of the beleaguered city, taking many prisoners. 
After inspecting parts of Western Jerusalem that have been emptied of Palestinians, Ben-Gurion said, In many Arab neighborhoods in the West, you do not see even one Arab. If we persist, it is quite possible that in the next six or eight months, there will be considerable changes in the country and to our advantage. One of the events that helped speed up the... So they are complaining about a genocide that they claiming they went through in Europe and then they go to Palestine and they commit the genocide. No soap. And then they commit genocide.